about 50 years ago, I took a photograph in about this position, and it looked like this. And this. I have lived in Auckland City all my life and have seen the demise of the trams and the ferry boats. I've witnessed the construction of the Auckland Harbour Bridge and the addition of the clip-on lanes, motorway construction and dedicated bus lanes and expressways. From the very start, poor political decisions have had a major impact on Auckland City. The first national government of New Zealand ignored the 1946 Royal Commission, which referred six lanes of traffic and a footpath for pedestrians on each side. Once the upgrades to Birkenhead and Northcote Wharf were completed, ferry services once again commenced. The old ferries had made a sterling job, but were now relegated to St Mary's Bay as their final resting place. Since about 1968, traffic volumes have increased massively, with over 800 cars per week being added to Auckland's roads as of 2018. The bridge and the motorways are now at their full capacity. When a change of government happened about the turn of the century, dedicated bus lanes were built, which is now called the Northern Busway. There was, however, a lot of opposition to these dedicated busways. The new opposition party opposed it. In fact, it was branded as to be a future white elephant. As it has transpired, the Northern Busway has become a massive success. In 1969, only 10 years after opening, Two lane box girder clip on sections were added to each side, doubling the number of lanes to eight. Within eight years, these clip on lanes were showing signs of material fatigue. Because the clip on lanes are slowly falling to bits, there are plans to construct a tunnel under the Waitemata Harbour. But there is another solution a new harbour bridge can be constructed across the Waitemata Harbour where the existing bridge is. But more about that later. May 2018 and it's election time. While there may be issues with some transit lanes in Auckland, they're not causing much of a stir in the Northgate electorate. Dan Bidwell would like to see a trial done for a T2 lane and extended hours for a clearway all the way down Onira Road. But I'm not sure if he means 24 hours. While Shane Halbert states that the transit lanes take 70% of the traffic. While a lot of fuss has been made about traffic congestion in Lineira Road, all the main arterial routes at, uh, from Highbury Bypass down to Lake Road and Northcote and Queen Street all feed into Lineira Road and it ends up in a single lane getting onto the Harbour Bridge. In fact, the only way to get more people across the Harbour Bridge from Northcote is for them to actually take buses. The proposed regional tax is a different matter. Dan Bidwa supports the party line and would vote for the repeal of the regional fuel tax. Dan Bidwa did however point out that it would cost the average family in Northcote about another $15 a week on fuel tax. But this is probably right at the extreme end. Most of the cars driving down Onira Road, as you can see, are just medium cars, probably between 1500cc and 2000cc. 
According to AA averages, these vehicles travel 14,000 kilometres per year. And at current cost of 91 octane fuel at $2.10 per litre, the new tax of 11.5 cents a litre will increase the weekly fuel bill by $2.33 a week. And that's probably about half the price of a cup of coffee. On that basis, drink half a cup of coffee less a week and you're back to square one. The success of the park and ride stations at Alpine is evident to see. They fill up very quickly in the morning and any late arrivals, well, I don't know what they do. Perhaps they just travel back down this motorway. And more often than not, going at this speed. But you've got to admit, it's a damn nice car park. But I can't see many of them complaining about the fuel tax. They get free parking all day, every day. Now up at Silverdale, it's a similar story. So desperate, the motorists are to park. They're parking on grass verges all over the place. I reckon if they doubled the car park area, it would still fill up. And that can't keep up with demand. So probably in the future, a multi-story car park will be required. Every morning, bumper to bumper traffic starts from Silverdale and goes right down to the Harbour Bridge and down beyond. As I mentioned earlier, there is a new concept designed to replace the iconic Auckland Harbour Bridge, and if adopted, it would just simply fade away. Now I'll give you an overview on how the Auckland Harbour Bridge will be replaced with the new twin bridge concept. The current eight lane steel structure which you see here will over a period of years be demolished. On the right hand side beyond the clip a new six lane bridge would be built with accommodation for a walk bay and rail. Once this is completed, the old original bridge plus the right hand side clip will be converted to six lanes going north. When this is in full operation, the left-hand side clip-on lanes will be demolished and then replaced with a six-lane bridge with accommodation for rail and cycleway. It took me a little while to fully understand these plans, but believe me, the concept is well thought out. And as far as I'm concerned, we'll take care of all the North Shore needs for a hell of a long time. Attitudes have changed over the years, and I do think that the political climate has changed somewhat. And such a concept may possibly be taken a lot more seriously than it would have been a number of years ago. Finally, I'd like to thank Jarl Raymond who is the architect of the new Twin Bridges concept for making these drawings available to me.